Hey, what's up friend, Juan Pablo here. You might be thinking to yourself, you might be wondering, why am I not at the level financially that I've aimed to be to be at, right? Why have not reached my goals? You know, it, it, to be honest with you, it probably has nothing to do with real estate, nothing to do with, with financing, nothing to do with your credit or funding, nothing to do with investing as a whole. It could be other things that are related to it indirectly, but not directly. In fact, it could be things that relate to you as a person, because there's many different aspects to you, right? You're a multifaceted individual. So it might not just be the business side of you, the investment side of you. It could be the spiritual, physical, or mental side of you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down a few things that can help you troubleshoot your own life to see if you made a few minor tweaks in these arenas that it could potentially have a positive impact or to make you get a positive return to help you get to that goal where you wanna be at financially. So let's talk about the first thing, spiritual, right? Oftentimes, it has to do with this, the heart issue, right? Not to, not to try to like uh, preach to you or hit you over the head with the Bible, <laughs> you know, but uh, it says in Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right, so the question is for the spiritual aspect, how do you think about yourself in your heart? And your heart is a, is a very interesting term, right? In your heart, it doesn't mean this. It doesn't mean your conscious mind. It means your subconscious mind, right? Things that are in your belief system, in the core of you. Things that are deeply embedded into your psyche that you don't even think about. It's just your default setting. This is what's steering and directing and leading you in the way that you should go. Not this. You think this, this conscious head is in the driver's seat. No, this is the engine, which is moving that body forward. All right, so the question is, how do you think about yourself? How do you believe yourself to be? Consciously, consciously you say, Yes, I want to have wealth. I want to have abundance. I want to have a successful business. I want to have a ton of properties. The fanciest car. I want to have all these nice things. Go to all these nice places. But down here, you might believe that in order to get rich or wealthy, you have to exploit people. And some people believe that. They might not admit it consciously, but subconsciously they believe that business owners are corrupt. Because you gotta get over on people. Maybe your team members, you gotta exploit them. Or you gotta get over on customers in order to get ahead, right? It's a doggy dog world. It's a win-loss situation. Win-lose, so I have to, in order for me to win, someone else has to lose. And being that you don't agree with that, because let's say you're a good person with morals and ethics, you tell yourself, you know what? I guess I can never be rich. Because in order to be rich, I gotta do these corrupt and moral things, which is not in my nature. So I guess I have to be content with being middle class or lower class, poor class, however you wanna define it. But it just could be, you have some wrong concepts or beliefs in your heart. And as a result of you consciously trying to do real estate investing, trying to do business, trying to do investing, and you're wondering why it doesn't work. Because it says this in James, I mean, we're talking about spiritual. A double-minded man can expect to receive nothing from the Lord. Double-minded meaning their conscious mind and their subconscious mind is not aligned. And it says, if you're double-minded, meaning you occupy two different beliefs or thoughts, expect to receive nothing, nothing from the Lord. You can't get the manifestation. So that's the key thing you want to look into. What's in my subconscious? Do I have beliefs that are contradictory to my conscious desires? And if so, how can I make these changes? So that's the first thing I want you to look into spiritually, right? Now, if you don't know these things that I'm sharing with you about these two verses, these are just two verses that talk about the mind and the heart. Right, but it's backed up by science. Look it up. I'm not making this stuff up, right? Because this is your default setting. That's how you can drive. You're like, oh snap, I'm home. 
consciously you didn't even realize that you were driving, but you made it to your doorstep. How? This automatic mechanism called the subconscious mind on autopilot took over. That's how it is. And the same thing happens with your finances. So you want to make sure you clear up all the gook, all the negative, nasty, nasty stuff that's in your subconscious mind so that it lines up with your desires. And so you got to get your heart right. You want to know how? Start reading that word. Start reading that Bible. Get your mind right. And just read it through a lens of a business person. Of how you can take these principles of age and implement them to your life today to get the results you're looking for. So take a look at the spiritual. Let's take a look at the next thing. Physical, baby. I know I hit my chest like 18 times so far. <laughs> but that's another thing you got to work on, baby. Not your chest per se, but your body. Your body is a temple. Your body is a temple of the Lord. So bring back the spiritual. So you want to make sure your body is healthy. Now, sometimes I fall short with that as well. Because uh, sweetness is my weakness, man. When it comes to some sugary cakes and pies, woo-wee! Man, that makes me somewhat fall short of the mark. And it's not conducive to what I really want. Because think about it, right? When you eat a really good food, good meal, let's say you went somewhere, some soul food restaurant or Thanksgiving, you had a big meal, maybe you went to a Mexican restaurant, you ate to your heart's desire. How do you feel after that meal? You already know the answer. Lethargic, sluggish tired you need some rest you don't feel like oh let me go work on this report oh let me go analyze some deals oh let me go talk to this agent oh let me go crush these numbers you're not thinking about that you're thinking about rest because when you digest all this bad stuff in your body your body's like oh hold up we gotta slow this dude down he ingested so much bad stuff we gotta shut the whole system down make this person tired so we can repair all the damage he just put in this body so if your all your energy and all your bodily resources are going towards digestion we think's happening up here you have that mental fog right you don't have mental clarity if you're eating junk food and processed food all day long or drinking alcohol every weekend because you might say to yourself, oh, I don't drink during the weekends on the weekend. That's, not, that's what I used to say to myself. But I realized even drinking on the weekends is still not good enough. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself too. Even eating some sugary food on the weekends is not good enough. Right? Because it, it affects your, your state of mind. And you're wondering why you don't have mental clarity, mental focus. The mental fortitude to have your 9 to 5 as well as do real estate in your part time. It has really nothing to do with anything else but what you eat. Right from what? Or the lack of exercise. And you might say, well, I don't have energy to exercise. Well, if you exercise, you would have energy. <laughs> as counterintuitive as that sounds, if you exercise, you get more energy. And I worked for the Census Bureau in my previous job, my last job I had. And I worked, we did we gathered a lot of stats, stat, you know, statistics. And one stat we gathered was if you had two people in the workplace, let's say everything was the same, same age, same gender, same skin color, same educational background, same uh, work experience, everything's the same. But if one of them works out and diets and the other one doesn't, guess who makes more money? You guessed it. The person who takes care of their body. Why? Because they have more mental clarity, more mental fortitude. They have, they have focus. Because if you're holding that pose, you're not thinking about, ooh, what am I gonna do later? Ooh, does SNL come on later? Ooh, does the, ha the housewives come on later? Or what about the game? You're not thinking about those things. You're focused intently on the moment. And that same level of focus will pour into real estate investing as well. Because I'm, I'm speaking to the person who does have that full-time job and they're saying, hey man, I can't get to that next level because, you know, uh, it's hard for me to, to really focus in my spare time. That when I, once I get home from work, I want to kick off my shoes and relax my feet. <laughs> I want to drink down some beer, eat some chicken. So the second thing, man, is physical. Now the third thing is mental. 
what are you doing to keep your mind sharp? A book a day keeps the competition away. Are you learning? Are you reading? Are you studying every single day? If the answer is no, then of course you can't reach the levels you want to reach where your finances are concerned. Because you're not sharpening this tool. Just like we just talked about sharpening your tool, you know, working out. I know my muscles aren't large, don't judge me. <laughs> you're like, dude, you talking about all this working out, you got them old baby muscles. Hey, I'm trying. I'm consistent. I'm working out, baby. But you gotta do the same thing for your mind. You have to be consistent. You have to work out your mind every day. So you wanna learn things that relate to real estate investing. It's not just about, okay, I know everything there is to know about deal analysis. Okay, what about market analysis? What about cash flow analysis? What about sourcing deals? What about networking? What about sales? What about negotiations? What about marketing? What about customer service? Because that's what tenants needs. You gotta service your customers. Your customers are tenants in this case. What about raising capital? As you can see, there's many different subject matter things that you need to study. So that way you can implement these things into your business so you can reap rewards. So every day, same time every day, if you're you know on a subway, listen to an audio book on a subway ride back home. If you're in a car, listen to a podcast or what have you that relates to the, the, the craft you're trying to perfect. Try to be consistent. I mean, I try, be consistent but try to schedule it in the same time every day because you'll see the compound effect. If you start learning every day, you'll see your real estate results increase incrementally, you know, in a linear fashion. And then you hit that tipping point where it's like whew, exponential. And who knows how long it could take? It could take a year, three, five. But once you hit that tipping point, bam, results through the roof. All right, so make sure you do that self analysis so that way you can get to that next level financially. Now, if you're interested in learning, build up that mental aspect, I have a free training for you. All you have to do, my friend, is check the link below, check the link below in the description to learn more. It's about real estate investing. It's about multifamily. That's what we're about. It's about creative financing. So just check it out and we'll be happy to assist. And as always, guys, this is to your success. Continue to earn passively, live passionately. Peace.